guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, He Won't Date Me Because I'm Plus Size and Five Other Ridiculous Reasons You Should Never Forgive. And guys, this article is written by a woman, and she's pretty much going into a rant against guys for basically being, when it comes to the looks and things like that, for basically being picky and not being attracted to women that are plus size or actually overweight, if we're really calling it what it is. She's saying plus size, be politically correct, and honestly to make herself feel better, but really overweight and in some cases fat, okay? And... You know, it's interesting about this is because, you know, as I've said before, countless times, you guys all know well, men are visual creatures. We're attracted to what we see, okay? And so if we see a good-looking woman and she is thin, takes care of herself, good body, long hair, sexy, dresses well, all that, you know, we're in. We don't need a whole lot of convincing. But a lot of women get really upset about this and really bash guys for basically how nature designed us to be, okay? They'll, they'll, they'll say, you know, they'll give us a hard time because we won't give women that maybe are a little bit overweight or, uh, as much of a chance as the good-looking ones, and they'll, they'll try to convince you, oh, she's really sweet and really kind and really smart and all these qualities, and for your average guy, it's like, that's that's great and all. Don't get us wrong, we like that, but if, if she doesn't meet the standards for us to be attracted to her uh, by our physical standards, that's it. It doesn't matter how kind she is, how sweet she is, and all that. Okay? And they don't get that. And what's funny is that, you know, this woman here in the articles, this is all about going on a rant, giving guys a hard time for our nature. But at the same time, we all know darn well just how psychotically picky women are. Okay? Now, again, looks are important to women, but they're not at the top of the chart for women. It's other things. You know, I've covered that so many times before. It's status. It's money. It's ambition and drive and confidence and things like that education you know where you are in society all that stuff there you know and looks are important but it's not the same so they don't quite get in the same way because basically you know we're obviously different and so it's easier just to bash us and give us a hard time for what uh we're attracted to versus just accepting hey you know what maybe if i'm overweight i need to take action to better the situation i can join a gym start exercising eating better things like that dressing better doing things to help my game it's easier just to point the finger at guys and basically say we're a bunch of assholes. So I'm going to go in this here. You guys see what I'm talking about. And also, by the way, guys, it's going to start off with her talking about her childhood and definitely go into some sob stories here about things that happened to her, you know, when she was younger. And don't get me wrong. I'm not at all for being cruel or saying harsh things to people. I'm not in any way. <clears throat> but at the same time, I'm not going to apologize for being attracted to what I'm attracted to. And no guy should apologize for being attracted to what he's attracted to. End of story. So, starting off, she says, When I was 12 years old, I fell for the perfect guy. He was every teenage girl's 1990s dream, a total Nick Carter-esque Backstreet Boy clone. I showered him with my love, affection, creepy stalking, endless teddy bears, imported chocolates, and handwritten poetry romantic enough to make Shakespeare blush. At 12 years old? But alas, it was never going to work out because he broke my heart, and, and never because he was like six years older, <clears throat> and it was basically illegal. When one day I overheard him telling one of his friends that I was a little dark and too pudgy to date. That night I went home and stared at myself in the mirror, unable to find what it was that he didn't like about me. Yes, I knew I wasn't as thin as other girls, or blonde or blue-eyed. Yes, I wore glasses and my shirts weren't fitted. Yes, my hair was always in a ponytail and I wore no makeup because I had no idea how to use it. In spite of all my relationships, I still couldn't find what it was about oh, my, all my realizations. I still co couldn't find what it was I didn't have that he had to say that out loud. We moved, uh, count, we moved countries and time healed my broken heart. I ate some chocolate. I ate some ice cream. I felt better. So the first thing happened when she was young, and obviously she got hurt, and that, that, that sucks, okay? But she was also young, and the guy, first of all, this guy was way older, so that's a little creepy because obviously, you know, what she said there. But um, young guys can be assholes, all right? But the bottom line is this, is that he wasn't attracted to her. End of story. 
Until I was 16, he was my first serious boyfriend, and we were one month and one week into our dating journey when he told one of my friends we'd broken up. It was news to me, so I messaged him and asked why I didn't get the memo. After a heated argument, he told me, why would I date you? You're so fat. When you get on the scale, it says to be continued. Even though it was online, the words hit so hard that it took a good five minutes for the tears to even weld up. What upset me was not that he called me fat. I knew that already. It was that I had finally given myself license to feel secure around a guy after years of feeling afraid and mistakenly thinking that he had found me attractive, just as I was. And suddenly here I was in my Catch-22 all over again. I got rid of him immediately, but I couldn't forget the dents in the widescreen uh, the wide screen of my confidence he'd left behind. To cut the long story short, that is in no way trivial or dismissive to any of the experiences I endured before my 21st birthday. I lost 15 kilograms and found new f- found confidence in myself. I was still not entirely happy with another 10 kilograms to go, but it was liberating to talk about exercise, take part in discussions about healthy foods, and feel like everyone else who was so concerned about their appearance. My insecurity evaporated for three whole years before last year. I found myself in the same rut I'd seen myself in years before. I fell in love with someone who broke my heart after a tumultuous, almost, relationship, and the little voice inside my head whispered, It's because you're not thin. It's because you don't look like the other girls. It's because you wear glasses. His type had always been thin, athletic, tall, blonde, Victoria's Secret model, not me. So... What other conclusion could I draw than to tell myself I was unattractive? Hard things to hear from anyone, but even rougher to listen to when they come to you from the person who is supposed to be there for you, you. Okay, so anyhow, yes, this is unfortunate. It happened to her growing up, and obviously she had her heart broken, all that. Okay, you know, I'm, I, I can be sympathetic and empathy, but here's the deal. If she's obviously overweight, and she knows it, because she said she dropped 15 kilograms and felt like she had 10 more to go. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, there are a lot of women that think in their minds they are overweight and need to lose more weight, but they look pretty good. Okay, I got a client right now, in my opinion, she looks good, but she still wants to lose more weight. That's on her. Okay, you know, but the point is this, if you know you're overweight, then you got to do something about it. And it isn't just about looks, it's also for your health. Okay, because if you're overweight too long, you can start to develop a lot of problems like diabetes and heart disease and all plenty of other shit you don't need. Okay, so taking care of yourself and being healthy. But obviously, if you're overweight, and obviously, you know, you're trying to attract members of the opposite sex, and you know they're attracted to thin, being thin, then you got to do something to take care of yourself. End of story. Not crying about it, not making excuses, get in the gym. And she said right here, she had lost like 15 kilograms when she was in college or something, and she got to be knowledgeable about food and exercise and all that. That's good. But also at the end of the day, you can't make everybody happy, okay? But again, how many guys have been kicked to the curb, cheated on, broken up with, all that, over a lot of stupid shit that in their mind, they thought they were doing their best, okay? It happens. She says, after three months of breaking away from this toxic relationship, both with him and my own mind, I now had the time to finally sit down and learn to appreciate how ridiculous it is for you to feel awful about yourself because you don't fit into the idea of someone else's fantasy. So, what if it was? What if I wasn't thin enough to slip through a crack? I am dedicated to my health, eat, eat well, run, dance, do weights, go to the gym, dress very well, take care of myself, and have an abundance of personality traits that make me the most unbelievable catch. Ask anyone except my mom, dad, and sister. They have to love me. So, of course, when I realize something, I have to blog about it because otherwise, really, what use is my learning if not to share it with all of you? Okay, well, so if she's doing this stuff, if she's going to the gym and running and eating well and lifting weights and all that, that's cool. Okay, that that's a good thing. All right, keep doing that. But not everybody's going to be into her. That's just how it is, okay? The best thing that she can do, any other woman in this situation that are angry at guys for not being into them, is do the, do what they absolutely, everything they can to help their situation, okay? Gym, eating well, healthy. Also, dressing well, dressing sexy, long hair, doing the nails, being feminine, being pleasant to be around, all that stuff. And are some guys not going to be into you? Sure, okay? But you're going to find other ones that are. All right, but don't go hating on all guys because they're not going to be into you. All right, the same thing with us guys. You know, you, guys, no, no matter how in good shape you are and how 
amazingly good looking you are and how much money you may make and you can you can drive a ferrari and, and make a million dollars a year and have a yacht and uh, be a trust fund brat and have all these great things going for you and confidence still there are going to be women that aren't into you okay you don't take it personally you just are not their type so here we go into her different reasons and all. It says, I sat down, thought about it, and here are some ridiculous reasons why women feel invalidated when men won't date them. If any, and she has any in giant letters, if any guy ever tells you he won't, he doesn't want to be with you for any of these reasons, I implore you there then to give him an old-fashioned slap and turn on your sexiest heel and with such swagger, he has no choice but to see your fine ass walk away forever. Now she's going to go into her reasons of what reasons why if guys do these things, you just walk away forever. They're unforgivable. Uh, number one, he won't date me because I'm fat, overweight, curvy, plus size, not a stick insect, too thin, too short, or too tall. In other words, I don't know how she looks. She says, I went into this one above briefly, but not but just to recap, briefly my ass, she did two pages about that stuff. Just remember one thing, it is your body at the end of the day. It is your right to look the way you want. If a man tells you he's not attracted to you because of the way you look, that is totally fine. Find someone else who is. But if a guy refuses to officially date you unless you agree to lose weight, have to change your body shape prior or at any time, makes you feel like the relationship won't progress further because of your body, ditch him. You may be fat, you may have extra weight on your big hips or big thighs or whatever, but whatever you have can't be a big of a problem as his narrow-minded approach to beauty that has probably been conditioned by years of reading Maxim. You're no, you are allowed to feel inadequate enough to, be, to date any weight or height, be it 40 grams, 40 kilograms, or 15 kilograms, 5 foot 2 or 6 foot 5. Never let someone's romantic interest dictate your approach to your health. Do it for yourself. Well, okay, if, if someone is, if a girl, a woman's overweight, and uh, she says, hey, I love me for me, which is bullshit, but, but let's just say she goes around with that attitude, okay, it's your life, do what you want, but don't go blaming guys, don't go hating guys for not being attracted to you when you, without a shadow of a doubt, need to lose some weight and, and be in better health, okay? You know, and it's one thing, like, if your guys are attracted to you, but if you go to an annual physical, which everybody should do, man or woman, and the doctor tells you you need to lose weight because you're going to develop problems later in life, then I'll tell you something, you're at an unhealthy level. And I'm not talking about BMI. The BMI way of calculating things is bullshit. That's the government's one-size-fit-all to, to, to calculate body fat and all that. But the doctor can tell flat out if someone is a little is overweight and unhealthy okay but don't complain don't blame guys if you're unwilling to take action all right number two he won't date me because i have a disability as sad as this one is even to discuss a lot of people face this issue when it comes to the big word world of dating there are some really shallow men out there who think women with any form of a disability, be it as small as imperfect vision to as serious as a chronic disease is broken and faulty goods and therefore not worth investing in Whatever your disability is part of who you are and gives you the strength, courage, laughter, joy, suffering, and experience that defines your character. You'd be through a lot more than any heartbreak he can give you by not dating you. So let him go seek his perfection, someone else's time, love, and affection. Okay, again, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, like, she's talking about the disabilities. Now, again, she says something like imperfect vision. I, I can't imagine anybody that would... Be not being into somebody because of imperfect vision, but okay, fine. But hey, at the end of the day, you know, again, how picky are women? How picky are women about the most mundane, stupid ass little things? So I'm just blame guys. Uh, next one. He won't date me because of my race, religion, or caste. Wow. Do I see this one and pop up a lot? Whilst I like to think we're all moving towards being global citizens and the boundaries that divide us between race, religion, creed, color, caste, and whatever, other human-driven per perceptual barriers we've built in our minds, the sad truth is that the world still remains a very divided place. I understand that a lot of cultures, relationships not of the same race and a religion may have severe and sometimes tragic consequences, and there are exceptions that are sometimes driven by elders or out of tradition and respect. These are hard to ignore, and for some, they don't want to, to ignore these unspoken rules because they believe in them. But outside of this, if a man has a choice to be with you and he chooses not to be based on the color of your skin or the relationship you have with God, 
And she says in parentheses that you don't enforce on him. He is displaying signs of such ignorance that it would be really be a kick in the butt to your ancestors, be they for whichever nation to continue to pursue him. You should be proud of your culture, background, and he should be respectful, no matter how harsh the stereotypes and stigmas in society. Well, here's the thing. For me personally, if I see a woman and I'm attracted to her, I like her personality, I find her looks attractive, I don't care what race she is, I don't care what color she is, I don't care what religion she is, okay? If I'm attracted to her, I'm attracted to her. But there are guys out there, and women too, that they aren't going to be attracted to some because they're not attracted. There are some that are simply not going to like someone because of their race or color and religion, and there's going to be others that aren't going to be attracted to them, okay? So... You shouldn't give somebody a hard time. If they're simply not attracted to somebody, you're not their type, and they're not attracted to somebody of a different color or a different background or religion, okay? Not attract. I didn't say like. I said not attracted to them. You can't give them a hard time about that because at the end of the day, you're attracted to what you're attracted to. All right? End of story. Okay? I'm not talking about, you know, not liking someone, even if they're a nice person because of their color or background or religion or whatever like that. I like everybody. I don't care. Again, what color they are in terms of a friendship level? Is some whatever color they are, or background they are, or, or, or how what, what religion? If they're a nice person, they're cool. I like them. End of story. But not everybody's like that. Okay. So, and again, back to these things. You can't tell me that there aren't women out there that are equally as picky. About, I wouldn't choose a guy because simply their color, their race, their background, their religion, whatever. Okay. Doesn't just go on guys. Uh, next one, number four. He won't date me because I'm younger or older. Unless you guys are involved in anything illegal or eerily creepy, like I'm talking about an over 10-year age gap here. What? This is the dumbest reason ever not to date anyone. If you display all the signs of maturity or immaturity, a person is after, but they won't let the figure of your age go, or using as a reason to justify ditching or delaying dating you, you have just as many good reasons as the number of years you've been alive to tell them to saw it off forever. Hey, at the end of the day, again, you know, if you're not attracted to somebody, you're not attracted to somebody, okay? But guess what? For instance, with guys, men are generally, like, especially men that are a little bit older, we're attracted to younger women. Why? Because basically younger women, they're in their prime, in their late teens and 20s. You got a guy in his 40s, and he's successful, making good money, got a lot of good things going for him, and he can easily date someone in her, a woman in her mid twenties, a woman that's mature and has her shit together, because there are some out there. Don't get me wrong. Versus a woman in her forties, what do you think he's gonna do? Come on here. But so many women lose their shit because guys are interested in younger women, and I know that's what she's jabbing at here, guaranteed. You know, it wasn't a problem for when for women when they're younger, dating older guys, was it? So, can't give us a hard time when men are older and dating younger women. Uh, another one, number five. He won't date me because I have acne, skin issues, or hair issues. No one is born perfect. Even George Clooney gets a zit okay. So, if I can deal with your profuse sweating, your weird little arm hair growth, and big smelly feet, you can deal with my hormonal acne, my itchy rash that just won't quit every three years. Sometimes life happens, and unfortunately, Photoshop doesn't have yet the offer, doesn't yet offer a real-time walking, talking, human be being flaw correlator. So until it does, tough. You can deal with my blemishes. As someone who has struggled with, and even now is on the healing side of severe cystic acne, if a guy didn't want to date me because I don't have the magazine skin, it's both his extreme stupidity and his loss. Because you and I can get a pill for our skin, but who will give him one for his brain? Good Lord, this woman is bitter. She has been obviously given a hard time her whole life. Well, about the whole skin thing, if you got skin issues, go, go to a dermatologist, okay? Whatever the problem is, and the dermatologist can help you in that department, and you got to stay uh, serious about applying the, the lotions and doing whatever you got to do to improve the situation. Uh, sometimes also it could be getting out of the damn sun could cause some issues. Other things could be uh, your with your diet that can impact skin. It, it's been shown to do. So again, taking action. But again, she's giving guys a hard time about this. Again, what we're attracted to physically. She has obviously been burned a lot of times, and is obviously probably she probably wrote this late at night, going on some psychotic rant after having two or three glasses of wine and had a bad date. See what I'm talking about, guys? Uh, number six, he won't date me because I'm not his type. 
Oh, because so women don't date guys because they're not their type either. That never happens. She says, hey, guess what my type is? Ryan Gosling. Yep, Ryan freaking Gosling is my type. He's literally the epitome of everything I want in a man. But how many times in my life have I met Ryan Gosling? None. How many times in my life has he sent me a text asking me how my day is going? None. How many times has he supported me through my ups and downs and moments of insecurity? None. Unless you count watching movies over during heart, heartbreak season, then a hell of a lot is that answer. The truth is, everyone always has an ideal, but this doesn't mean that that ideal is obtainable in reality. If a guy won't date you because you don't look like or sound like or aren't as educated as the fictitious woman he's drawn up in his head for himself as his type, then really, let, it sink in his, let him sink his own boat without you in it. You will never be his ideal woman, and the good news is he will never meet her because she doesn't exist. After all, if dating is his type, if dating his type had gone so well, he wouldn't be single in the first place. Maybe he wants to be single. Maybe he wants to date lots of women his type. So with regards to that, again, you don't you can't tell me that women don't aren't ultra picky about guys that aren't their type. At the end of the day, guys, you know. We all have types, and I don't just mean in terms of looks, but also personality, interests, things like that. Okay, everybody does. You can you can line up twenty different women, good-looking women, and obviously, and you could pick three. Guys are going to pick the three that's more their type. That's just how it is. It doesn't mean the rest aren't attractive, but just they have their type. And of course, it also goes into personality traits and uh, things like that, and just interest. You know, don't give a guy a hard time here. Again, she probably wrote this after having multiple glasses of wine and been burned by yet the latest guy that probably didn't want her because she was overweight or had bad skin or wasn't her type. Who the hell knows? So there you have it. In the poignant words of Eleanor Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, now that's a looker. I think they nicknamed her horse face. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Least of all, some douchebag who doesn't know what he's missing by waiting for Adriana Lima to show up at his door. He'll be waiting a long time yet. So there you go, guys. I thought that was a fun article to read, just her going into a psychotic rant about all these things, about God forbid guys aren't being attracted to overweight women. She wanted to be politically correct, correct to say plus size, but I'm being real here, overweight or fat. Okay, And I made it quite clear, there are things that women can do to help their situation big time you know, in that department. Okay, and, But what's easier? actually taking action and working hard to improving yourself or just sitting back and blaming guys and making us the arch villains, the root of all evil for, cause God forbid we're not attracted to women that are overweight. Okay. And then all the list of all the other things she listed and went on her rant about, you know, and things like that. But at the end of the day, when it comes to men, we're visual creatures and we're attracted to what we see. Okay. So the best thing women can do is do everything they can in their power to better themselves physically. Okay. It's no accident when a lot of women go out on a date with a guy they really like, okay? Believe me, they're they're there trying on multiple outfits before they go on that date. They're putting on the makeup and doing everything in the right shoes, do everything they can to make themselves look sexy, the right perfume, all that stuff. Why? Because they know we're drawn to what we see, okay? So that's what women can do. But of course, in this day and age, thanks to feminism and all that stuff, you know, the idea is that, hey, men should just like us who we are, okay? Well, with that attitude, you're all going to be home with your cat and drinking box wine and being pissed off that you're alone, okay? So, best thing you can do, take action. Don't go hating us, okay? And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of asshole guys out there. I'm not going to deny that, but still, there's plenty of good guys out there. Just take out, take your views and your attitude and, and just put them aside and just take action and prove yourselves. The game will get a lot better for you, guaranteed. So, all right, guys, I had to share that. I thought that was pretty funny to read. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.